Sunday shop, please try to be with me as often and as much as you can. Uh, if you can't for some reason, feel free to tune in. And if you're on the internet this morning, um, I know we've got a couple new members. We would love to welcome them. Y'all just plug in. Uh, just worship the Lord with us. We're going to present the gospel here in your midst. But um, just uh, feel free to worship with us. So, But over the next three Sundays, that's what we'll be doing. Um, this morning, uh, we'll be looking at the 26th chapter, the Gospel of Matthew, uh, verse 36 through 46. And if you found your place there with me in the Word of God, I'd invite you to stand with me this morning in the honor of the reading of that Word. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto his the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples, and he findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What could ye not watch with me? One hour. Watch and pray, that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time, and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them, and went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed to the hands of sinners. Verse 46. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. Y'all pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you with the unbelievable privilege of being able to eavesdrop on your Son and you talk. Lord, we pray today that your Holy Spirit would have free reign in this place. Lord, convict where conviction is needed. Lord, re allow repentance where repentance is needed. Lord, save those who need saving. These things we will pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Y'all can be seated. So we look at verse 36 there. And then cometh Jesus with them unto the place called Gethsemane. What is that place? Well, Gethsemane, for y'all that don't know, bear with me if you don't know, uh, is the place where they pressed olives and they uh, pressed them to get the oil out for, you know, in antiquity. They cook a lot like we do, or if you cook healthy, uh, in olive oil. So that's what they used, and that's where Jesus was at. It was a very deserted place. And think about the time of day it was. They had had the uh, Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper had been, he had partaken in that. He had identified Judas as the traitor. Uh, so this had to be very, very late. Uh, probably, I should say, in the wee hours of the morning. That's speculative, of course. Um, but he was in this place called Gethsemane. And he's talking to the whole group of disciples. And he says, sit ye here while I go, go pray yonder. So, what does Christ do immediately? He separates himself from the crowd. You know, I know we pray corporately together here when we're at church, but when you are really wanting to talk to God, you need to be alone. You need to be alone with the Lord. Uh, you know, we're to be Christians. That's to be more Christ-like daily, right? You're to be Christians. 
But so he so he leaves the group there. And then he takes the kind of inner circle, if you will. He takes uh, Peter, James, and John, or the sons of Zebedee. He takes Peter and the sons of Zebedee uh, with him uh, on farther from where the group is. But look there in 37. Now we're talking about Jesus, the Word, God. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, we're talking about Jesus. And I want you to look at what the Scripture says here. He began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Now I want you all to think about that for just a second. Think about who we're talking about. We're talking about the King of Glory. And He's sorrowful and heavy. And we're going to get to why He's sorrowful and heavy. Uh, and I can assure you, uh, you, might not, you might think it's death, but that's not what it is. And then he saith, he saith unto them, that's Peter, James, and John, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. The king of glory, Denny, is sorrowful unto death. Why in the world do you think the king of glory, do you think he didn't know what he was going to do? do you, you don't think that. Uh, he's omniscient. He knows all things. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He knew uh, he knew that was no big deal. Death was no big deal to Christ. Don't think that for one second. That's not what's bothering him. That's not it. Uh, and, but he's sorrowful, exceedingly sorrowful. You know, have you ever had a night? Yeah, I know you have. I've had many of those nights. Have you ever had a night when nothing could bring you comfort? Amen. Have you? You know, I know who I called on, Miss Jewel, when I had that. I don't know who the lost people in this world call on. I know who I called on, God, uh, to get me through that night. But look here at Jesus. He's exceedingly sorrowful. And he speaks about unto death. I mean, that's bad sorrowful. I mean, and I know we grieve before. I've grieved with many of you. I grieve sometimes Still, I assure you, but unto death, that's serious stuff. Uh, he's not playing around here when he says he's grieving unto death. He can, and you know, when you talk about Jesus, he cannot lie. So what he's saying to you is going on in his soul. Uh, he's pouring out his soul. But what does he ask his best friends in the world? What does he say to the people that his brethren? that have been with him some three years, three and a half years is uh, most estimates. Three and a half years, these men have been with Jesus. They've seen him raise Lazarus from the dead. These men that, that are the inner circle, they're the closest to Christ. What does he say? Terry, you here with me and watch with me. Now, don't get confused. At this point, he's not calling a prayer meeting, Miss Joel. He's telling them to watch. He's telling them to watch with him there in that deserted place. So Jesus leaves him in 39 there. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, We'll get to the prayer in a second. Do you know this is the only time that's in all of the Gospels? The only time that we see Jesus falling on his face. Do y'all realize that? The only time. Now we see people worshiping Christ all throughout. His time here on earth. But this is the only time we see Jesus prostrate before God. So, when Jesus says that He was sorrowful unto death, do you think He knew who to talk to? Do you think He knew where to go to get solace or get an answer? He was going to talk to God. But look there at His prayer. Oh, my Father. Don't admit the O. Oh. oh, my Father. That's how sorrowful Christ was. What was He sorrowful about? It's got, to be, it's got to be on your mind by now. It was certainly on mine when I was studying this, script, this text that I've studied it many times. But what is bothering Him so deeply? You think He couldn't handle the Romans, Brother Donald? He had twelve legions of angels at his disposal at any second. Don't get confused about him having to go anywhere. So you don't think he can't handle death? 
let's, let's talk about death for just a second. If I don't leave my place here today, read you a text here in, in the Gospel of John, chapter 11. It's my favorite. <clears throat> Verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you think the life... He said, I am the life. Do you think the life is scared of death? I am the resurrection and the life. He goes on that, He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe us now this. He is the life. In Christ is life. If you don't have Christ, you have death. Don't get confused, folks. Uh, so, what do you think he was... Let me try to stay on point here. What do you think he was so concerned about, Victoria? What was driving him to the point of greeting himself unto death? Think about it. My soul is sorrowful, exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. That's what Christ said. That's what your Savior said. He's grieving himself even unto death. He's so, so sorrowful. Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. What cup is he talking about? You think it's the crucifixion? He was marred more than any man, Danny. For you and me. Amen. He was marred more than any man ever. Think about that. For you and me. Do you think that's what's grieving his soul? No. I don't think that's what's grieving his soul. I don't think it's bothering him at all. He'll shed his blood for you, Vicky. He did. He'll die the death, the cross, agony of the cross for you. Vicky, he did. He knew the mission. So what in the world has got his soul so grieving, so to the point of agonizing death, that's driving him mad? You know, we're talking about the Holy One of Israel. We're talking about a person that never sinned. Sinlessly perfect. We're talking about 100% man. 100% God. The God-man, if you will. We're talking about Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords. What could possibly be grieving him to this point? The cup. The cup is what's grieving him to this point. God's wrath is what's bothering Christ. Don't you get confused. It's not the death of the cross. It's not the Romans. It's not anything other than that cup of wrath. But he's got to drink to the dregs. He's got to take it all. Well, what's in the cup, Brother Mark? The sins of the world. Your sins. My sins. The sins of this world are in that cup. You know, I work, at a, I work with a bunch of mechanics. They're probably watching today. They talk to me all the time about hell and how they'll get along okay with the devil. I told one of them Friday, the devil was not their problem in hell. It was God that was their problem in that place called hell and his wrath, his justified wrath because of what they've done. You know, our God is love. That is true. But he's also wrath. He says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And then the promise, I will repay. What does that mean to you? That means that no, one, no matter what someone does to you as his child, he has wrath to pour on them in that place called hell. Think about it. They don't have to be scared of Satan. God's going to throw him in the lake of fire. That's not the problem. The problem is a sinner in the hands of an angry God. Amen. That is the problem. That is what Christ was looking at, the wrath of God being poured out upon him. Look, it was poured out so deep, Mother, that the sky got darkened. Jesus is looking at this and his soul, his soul is hurting down deep inside of him. He can't stand it. The human part of him can't stand it. 
You know, if he called the angels and went home right then, you'd be lost. When you, if he didn't drink the cup, the cup of wrath that God had for the people that walk in disobedience. If he didn't drink the cup, you'd still be dead in your sins and trespasses. If he didn't drink it all, Denny, are you coffee drinkers, down to the last dreg, you know, the little grounds that are in the bottom of the cup. He drank it all. If he hadn't, you'd still be dead in your sins and trespasses this very hour. Mm. So you can imagine, just in the little bit that I've described for, me, for you, uh, why he was upset about having to drink this cup. Now this has been on his human side. You know, again, he was 100% man, 100% God. Look what he says. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. What is he saying? God, I can handle the, I can handle the, uh, the Romans. I can handle the cross. I can handle crucifixion. I can handle the beating. I can't handle your wrath. But it's not my call. I submitted to you. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. So he finishes his prayer. And I've got to ask you, uh, are you in his will? Are you in God's will today? Are you? Or are you in self-will today? You know, so many times we, uh, so many times and so often, uh, we pray. And we ask God to do something for us. You know, in your prayer life, you know, you might, you might be praying very hard. Now, I hope you, and pray you have an active prayer life. You know, this is to be a house of prayer. Uh, you're to be a temple of prayer. You're to be talking to God continually. But think about your prayer life. Have you ever asked God something and He didn't answer? Is that what you think? I think you're wrong. He doesn't ever not answer you. Sometimes the answer is no. Are you in His will today? Are you in His will? Can you be like Christ? Can you be a Christian? Can you say, not my will, but thy? Can you say that today? I hope and pray you can. Don't think you don't listen. He hears every prayer uttered out of your mouth. The one thing he wants more than anything is a relationship with you and I. He hears every prayer. But are you in his will today? I don't know. So Jesus finishes his prayer and he comes to the disciples and finds them asleep. And he's, and he's talking to Peter. What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Y'all ever have friends like that? <laughs> well, they're great when they're... They're great in the great times. But where you're really under the press, when you're really struggling, and it seems like everything in the world is falling apart around you, they're not there. Not the definition of a friend, by the way. But the question is, did Jesus need them there? No. Jesus was going to complete the mission. Now, Jesus always knew the mission. He was going to complete it. But when he looked at the wrath of God, he staggered. And who wouldn't? I mean, who wouldn't stagger at the wrath of Almighty God? But he talks to Peter here and he says, What? Could you not wait with me one hour? Wow. You know, a little ways back, Peter, Peter said he would die with him. But he couldn't stay awake for one hour. Jesus gives him instructions now. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So he wants them to watch and pray for what? That they don't enter into temptation. Who do you think was there in the garden? I think Satan was in the garden battling him at that time. Where else would the temptation come from? He tells them to watch and pray now. The watch is over, but the watch and pray is the new instruction. That you enter not into temptation. And then he 
Then he gives an analysis of the Spirit and the flesh. Uh, the Spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. You know, and I know those guys have probably been up, and I'm not making an excuse for them. Probably if I'd have been them, they'd have probably, uh, you know, after a meal, I get a little bit lazy, Brother Benny, and it was probably a great meal with the Lord. You can have no doubt about it. But um, it was probably the best meal. Uh, but I would probably get a little lazy and I'd be a little sleepy too, especially wee hours in the morning after I was after I was full of food and and fellowship. So you can imagine those guys being really sleepy, sleepy. But he sure comes down on old Peter pretty good. Don't it? Well, could you not wait and watch for me one hour? Uh, So he went again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if this cup, cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. You notice the prayer changed just a little bit. Uh, I think God answered his question. Uh, he is going to pray about it one more time, but I think God answered his question. The prayer changed just a little bit. If this cup may not, the first time, let this cup pass. You know, God said no. God said no, you're going to have to drink this cup. You're my son, but you've got to drink this cup. It's the plan. I made the plan. The plan is perfect. It's the only way to redeem our people. The only way. Think about it. Is there anyone anywhere at any time that could die in your place? Jesus is the only one. Again, 100% man, 100% God. Sinless. Perfect. Is there anyone that could die in your place? No. No. It had to be Jesus or nothing. It had to be Jesus or you had to stand before a righteous God and answer for your sin. Like the people that don't believe in Christ this very hour. Father, this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it. Thy will be done. Again, are you in His will or are you in His way today? You know, your life is going to be one of two ways. You're going to be in the will of God or you're going to be out of it every day. I didn't say you're going to ever lose your salvation. I don't believe it's a possibility. I don't think you're responsible for it. I think God's got it in His hand. Amen. You can't lose it. Right. Okay, I don't think you can lose your salvation. But I promise you this. You'll be in the way, the will of God, or you'll be out of the will of God every single day. And those out of the will days is when you'll fall into sin. You'll fall out of fellowship with the Lord. Uh, so, are you in His will or in His way today? And He came again, and He came, and He found them asleep again. <laughs> Their eyes were heavy. <laughs> but I know He needed them. He didn't have time, but he needed them. And they just couldn't rise to the challenge, could they? I don't know. I've been sleepy before. I used to work at night shift, and it's hard to stay awake sometimes. <clears throat> and he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. So there's been three prayers. And God's answered him, it's absolutely not. You've got to drink the cups down to the grave. Down to the very dregs that are in the bottom of the cup. You've got to do my will. And you know, uh, if this is not a perfect picture of Christ, I don't know what it is. He is being, he's God. Okay, John 1.1. 1, 1. Again, was Word, Word's with God. And the Word was God. But what is he doing? He's humbling himself before God the Father. And saying, not my will, but thou be done. Think about it. Where are you today? Are you in His will? Are you in His way? Then cometh, verse 45, Then cometh He to His disciples, and He saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Look, God the Father's answered. Uh, Christ has been betrayed. God the Father has answered. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. The 
the Lord of glory has been betrayed into sinners. But you know, it was never their plan. It was always God the Father's plan. From uh, the beginning of creation, it was the plan. That the Son would come and die in your place for your sin and mine. Uh, It was always the plan. The plan had never changed. But the human side of Christ, when he looked, when he looked at the wrath of God, he asked the Father to let the cup pass, and the answer was no. So again today, and, and I'm going to close here, again today, are you in his will? Do you find yourself in his will today or in his way? Have you submitted to God? Uh, you call yourself a Christian, but have you submitted Unto God. Have you made Christ your Lord? You can't just have fire insurance. You can't just be your Savior. Has He been made your Lord and Savior? That's the question today. Are you in His will? You know, and if I, if I talk to you today and you've heard this message, it's not an accident. God's given you an opportunity. Uh, you know, being saved is not a complicated thing. The first thing you have to do is admit that you've sinned and come short of God's glory. What do you mean, Brother Mark? Well, if you've ever broke one of God's commandments, if you ever told a lie, guess what? You're guilty. Uh, you deserve hell. You've uh, sinned and come short of the glory of God. You missed, you missed God's perfect mark. Well, what do I do after that? Well, uh, the next thing you need to do is repent of that and, and call upon the name of God and telling you agree with Him that He raised uh, His Son uh, on the third day for your sins and mine. And then you've got to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. You know, if you're on the internet today and you've, you've made that profession, you've made that decision, please text us and let us know. We'd love uh, to communicate with you. We'd love to talk to you about that. Give you some guidance uh, on becoming a Christian. Um, and if you're a child of God today and you've been out of fellowship with Him, if you've been backslid, if you, if you were, you know, he's standing right there. He's told us that he would never, ever leave or forsake us. What does that mean? That means you can't make him leave. He's not like the disciples. He's not going to go to sleep. He's not going to run from you in the times of trouble, in the times of pain. Christ will always be there. Closer than a brother. So if you find yourself there today, pray that the Lord will restore you and restore the joy of your salvation this day. And again, where do you find yourself? Are you in the will of God? Are you in the way? You tell me which way you are. Y'all stand with me. We're going to be dismissed. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. Lord, we thank you for your written word. Oh, Lord, we know it's inspired. We know it's all of you. And Lord, we thank you that we get the opportunity to eavesdrop just a little bit on your dear son's prayer. Lord, we pray today that if there be any among us that that don't know you as their personal Savior, Lord, we pray today that they would give up that simple lie and Lord, just sell out to Jesus and Jesus alone. Lord, we pray for the sick of among us today. Lord, we pray today that you would heal them this very hour. Lord, we pray that each and every soul here would make it home safely and back here at the next point of hour. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.